guys from Indigo Lights, how do you do? Welcome back on this beautiful day, beautiful evening, wherever you are. I am in the, in the eastern part of the Mediterranean and it is 26 degrees Celsius right now, so hence the t-shirt. Uh, it's not your regular March weather, but uh, I personally wish I was somewhere colder to be able to diversify. But here we are. So uh, I want to welcome you back and thank you for, uh, for subscribing, for following, for the comments and for the love. Um, so today I want to touch on a couple of things. I'm going to do a, a two-part video, okay, two-part video vlog, and I want to talk about follow-up to the last video I made regarding what's happening in, in March, the energies, the equinox and the grounding, and uh, regarding channeling, which I think is going to be a very cool, a very interesting, um, interesting video. Okay, so uh, to begin, uh, as of now, the energies are super intense. Uh, there is like there's a downpour of energies that are just coming down for the last since the 20th of the month So it's uh, two three days so far um, It is really intense. I'm personally feeling it in the heart chakra uh, There is a necessity to release all blockages and the message that I got yesterday among other things was that um, We are nearing the end the completion the grounding into 5d and the, the last core beliefs the last really important issues that need to be addressed are being pushed out by force not in not a, in a bad connotation. Just that the energy is coming uh, is coming down. It's coming through you. Most of the blockages are going to be in your heart chakra, and it's really it's really best to address them and not to you know to to pretend like they're going to go away by themselves. So, on a personal note, uh, yesterday I sat down after a couple of days of feeling a little bit out of balance, and I meditated, and I addressed uh, a fear of the unknown. What was going to come next, and and the constant um, that we have in that we're used to in 3D, the constant barrage and and a preoccupation with what is going to come next, and I really had to let it go. I saw the uh, the weight being lifted from from my center chakra, from my heart chakra, physically and and mentally, and uh, I wanted to touch this to touch on this regardless. It was a beautiful thing because I went into this into this uh, meditation. Uh, not in the best state, and I came out of it completely liberated, and I went to sleep, I slept like a baby. Um, and I was thinking about 3D addressing these problems. If somebody doesn't have the awareness, this is why I want to thank all of you for being here, because you recognize that we are spiritual beings in a physical body, but the way to resolve things isn't necessarily to pop pills, go to the doctor, and then treat it only in a 3D manner. That predominantly doesn't solve anything. So we have this quote-unquote gift to be able to sit down, address issues that bother us on a physical and metaphysical basis, um, and to get rid of them within you know 20 minutes, half an hour, 15 minutes. It's honestly a gift. This is the way I see it, at least. So I released the blockage, and I felt completely liberated. Today, there are still things flaring up. Um, I just want you to be mindful and aware of this, and to spend a decent amount of time meditating or just sitting with yourself going into your heart chakra uh, in a regressive manner. You know, you can count from 10 to 1. Go and find your center and try to listen within your heart chakra what, what is the blockage, what, what, is, what is still bothering you. Because there are these core issues and they're going to keep on popping up. Um, energies in general from our guidance, from the universe, from the creator, they come in waves. And they usually, there is a sentence in English, uh, God only gives you what you can handle. Okay. Um, it's basically the same principle. The energies come in waves. Some waves are much more intense than others. And they are geared to be able to be, uh, to be digested, I'm going to say, by the collective and the people that are awake, who are, you, who are acting as, uh, as conduits for the new energy as well. So sometimes it's more difficult for us, the people who are awake and awakening, than the, the rest of, of, the, of humanity who are still living between 3D, 4D, and some are entering into 5D. Um, so to be mindful of these energies and to understand that they come in waves, so you may have a calmer period and then just this influx. And I had anticipated, I, I, I dabble in astrology for about 10, 15 years, but on a very amateur basis, uh, channeling. I had gotten this, this, this dates from the 20th, from the equinox, the 21st, uh, most 21 dates within the month are gateway days because they line up to three, but that's going to be addressed in a different video. 
just the week from the 20th and until the 27th, those seven days. Uh, the influx, I started feeling the 19th to the 20th was, was difficult to deal with, frankly, until yesterday that I really sat with myself. And I acquiesced to letting the energy pass through me and to, to understand what it was here to teach me. So the energies will intensify as we are nearing the completion. I don't know how many waves and, and periods between waves there will be until then, but it is really, really in your best interest to sit down with yourself and to spend a decent amount of time just introspecting and trying to see where are the blockages and what are the issues that, that these are important issues, otherwise they wouldn't be you know flaring up like that. Uh, what are the issues that you really need to address that you need to spend time uh, with looking at and considering the change and the period after the change, okay, which is the, the topic of my last video. So be mindful, that's all I'm saying, for your own benefit, because it is difficult. It's difficult for me. I'm sure it's difficult for most people that I'm talking to, people that are that function as clients, people that function as, as, as teachers, and, and people in between that are transitioning. Um, the energies are what they are. We're all in the same position. We, we have to be mindful and accepting of what is happening and to let it pass through us. And that means to take a certain amount of time every single day just to sit with ourselves, to reach a stasis, a balance, uh, by which we can function during the day and to look at the issues that we're not really addressing, that we're running away from, that we think we can swipe under the carpet. Because this, these are the final stages and they are the most important stages. And whatever you've been neglecting to address all this time is going to come up. Okay. So the time that you spend every day dealing with these things is the most important time of the day. Because it's the time that you set your clock to. It's the time that you that you open the gateway to your day with. You can start your day on a negative note. You can start your day on a positive note. And if you find yourself a bit flustered during the day, go find a quiet place. Even if you can't, take a small break from work. Go to under, sit under a tree. Sit in, in a park if you have one near your work, if you're at home. Gather yourself. Balance yourself. And ask the universe, your guidance, whoever speaks to you from your heart, what is this? What is happening to me? How can I address it? And what is it meant to teach me? And and how do I? What do I need to do, physically or spiritually, to release this? Okay. Um, so that's issue number one. Now, the second part of the video that I want to talk about is channeling because it's, it's a thing that I get asked a lot. Um, so I want to demystify the the term channeling from my own perspective and the things I've learned. Um, I've personally been channeling from 2009. Um, on a personal basis, I've always been inspired by the metaphysical, the mystical. I, I never was into religion or uh, any of those institutions much as a child. I always sort of rejected them. Um, I started my spiritual journey around 2008 after a certain breakdown of my foundations within my life and I had to rebuild and I tried the 3D way of seeking answers and I couldn't find anything out of that. Eventually I ended up with a teacher. Uh, this was in Israel where I spent a good 20 years in, in total. Um, I have since then left and I'm jumping around countries and, and relocating very soon uh, to the Western Hemisphere. Hopefully sooner than later uh, and I'm looking forward to it very much. Now, um, in regards to channeling, the beauty of the internet, something I learned from my teacher early on, was that in the ancient times, you had the figure of the oracle, the soothsayer, the mystic. And that was something very, um, very esoteric, and it wasn't attainable by a lot of people. And there was a lot of, you know, a mystified aura around this, this, per this person, this man or woman in the ancient times. Today, if you know where to look within the internet, you can find pretty much anything that you need, including ancient scripts from the Middle Ages and so on. Um, the knowledge is out there, okay? There is a demystification of channeling of, of, of things that are esoteric, and uh, the internet offers it to everyone, and anyone who's willing to look for information, you can basically find it. Of course, Whatever you end up reading, whatever you end up looking at at the end of the day is supposed to fall into your lap, as you see in, in, in English. Um, you end up with the information that you, can, that you can fathom, the information that you can understand, that you can adapt to your, to your, uh, your beliefs. Okay? Um, 
the, the, the issue with channeling is that, in essence, since the day that we are born into this physical being, physical bodies, the incarnation that we're in now, every single person on earth is channeling in some way or another. Okay, this is to demystify the first thing that there is. A, there are a select few on it who are our history, who are the ones that are here to bring us a message. Okay, when I started channeling, I we did a class on it within some organization, within some uh, a group that we had. Our teacher gave us an initiation ritual, um, and we started channeling. I was actually the last person to channel in the group, and the reason why is is, is very funny and very simple. I had expected uh, fireworks and, you know, hearing voices from guidance in a very clear way, and I didn't. So I sort of assumed that I'm not channeling. Eventually, as I progressed, I started channeling fluidly, very well. It was a, a beautiful progression. And I realized that, stupidly enough, I had been channeling the whole time. It just was so intuitive. It was like, like the voice of a thought within your heart chakra that you had to really listen to in order to discern it. It was the most intuitive thing. And as I understood it, it dawned on me that since I had been a smaller kid as I can possibly be, it had been there. So that I would, the fanfare and the mystification and the, the, you know, the glamorous effects of whatever I was expecting, uh, they weren't there. And the, the reason being is very simple. Um, channeling is not something that is geared towards a select few. It is something that every being that ever, has ever lived has the, cap the capacity to do. It only depends on their spiritual journey within this incarnation or not, the level of their energy and so on. But we are physical vessels, and within us we hold a soul that is linked to other souls via a soul group. We have an energetic field around us. We are all spiritual beings, and we communicate with all there is and all that is all the time. Okay, we just don't know it. So the, 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 the thing to demystify the channeling is just that we are all holding like a radio over our shoulder. The only thing that we need to do is to be able to tune into the specific frequency and not to assume that the other is able to do it but not us, because that's completely untrue. Especially if we're asking these questions, we're already considering this as a source of connection to something greater than us. We're not going towards a religious book uh, whereby, you know, prophets uh, of old are able to communicate with, with, uh, with God, okay, in whatever deity they're looking at. The problem that I find with these texts is that there is a giant gap created between you and infinity, the source, the creator, whatever you want to call it. Meanwhile, that book, if you push it out of the way and you connect yourself to that source, you are that source and you've been communicating with it since you know yourself. And now you're remembering, so it becomes easier to understand that you have been doing that. So for me, it was, uh, I'm going to call it an illusion, a demystifying, illusion popping uh, understanding. That whatever I had expected, the grandiose, you know, channeling experience was basically a very personal, very intuitive thing. And I just had to tune in to the specific frequency within my heart and not my mind and to push the ego a bit out of the way and let the information come. And I understood that many memories that I have of myself in weird kind of spiritual situations from the age of three, four, since I remember myself, this is what I've been doing the whole time. I just didn't understand it. And I'd always been talking to a being out there when, you know, you can call it a prayer, but I'd always been requesting things, requesting help. I remember myself 10, 11 years old in situations. This was my go-to, uh, you know, answer, uh, the being that would, that would supply me with answers. Um, so, essentially, if you think that you can't, or if you think that it's allocated to others, don't. Uh, if you really want to, you will. And don't think that it's something that is very unattainable, difficult, and there has to be a whole uh, long initiation sequence in, in the, within the mystical arts and the mystical world. If you're supposed to, you will, obviously. If you really want to, you can. The point is to do it from your heart, without the mind, the subconscious, and the ego, because these are the things that, uh, that put thoughts uh, that are not supposed to be there and kind of, you know, uh, a little bit of fear penetrates and so on. 
Um, so this is what I wanted to address today in terms of what we call channeling. Everyone can do it. Everyone does it. The, the only thing that allows you to really tune into your channeling prowess is your awareness. Your awareness that your ego exists, that it can meddle that you have your fears and that you have your subconscious. And once you're able to push all these things aside and go within yourself, you can ask whatever you want and the universe, the creator, your guidance, wherever it may be, uh, will provide answers that will help you understand things and move forward. Of course, practice makes perfect. It takes quite a while to get used to tuning into the specific frequency from uh, what I was taught uh, we can call the line of the middle, which is your center, is to do it only through that, without the, the distractions of whatever is going on around you, including within your energetic field. And from that place, you can connect with yourself, which is exactly what you're doing, with your soul, with your guidance, with the creator. These elements are within you, and they are around you, and they are you. So there is nothing alien here, there is nothing foreign, there is nothing that is difficult to understand. All you are doing is basically connecting, reconnecting with yourself on the most basic and deepest level. And that is um, a breakthrough that I foresee will change our world within the next couple of hundreds of years, maybe more, maybe less. Um, people being able to be more self-reliant in order to solve problems and not to rely on uh, outer factors, institutions, uh, the modern soothsayers, the modern oracles, in order to give them answers. I think as a spiritual counselor, a spiritual teacher, mentor, whatever you want to call it, the point is to empower whoever comes to you and to set them free, to pass on whatever you've learned, because it is not your knowledge. You don't possess anything. It was a gift that was given to you to remember um, what you were meant to learn and to pass the torch on for that person to pass it on to someone else and so on and so forth. So there is nothing, um, there is no copyright on this, okay? And it's something that really everyone can do. And the more we, we come back into ourselves, that we wake, we wake up to the, the potential that we have, to what we really are and what we really were, and we understand us, the you, not the new you, the old you, but you. It's what you were always. You just had more layers covering you, fears, uh, things that were constricting you, your ability to be yourself. The more you let all of that go and wither away, the more you can connect with your inner message. And then the, the answers, the things that you seek the most, they're right here. Okay, you don't need to go anywhere outside. And this is the reconnection to yourself that you really need to make. So that was my first attempt at trying to explain from, from my perspective, from the things I've learned, uh, the art of channeling, what it really means, okay? And it, that it is much more intuitive and simple than most people would think. It's not something that is uh, unattainable. It's not something that requires, I don't know, uh, you to be connected in a certain way to a specific energy. You are connected anyways. You are just accessing yourself and your own source of energy and kind of opening the conduit up so that it can flow down and download into your being and come out of your mouth or coming into your in your thoughts so that you can communicate with yourself and other people. Okay, you are infinity. There is nothing stopping you from being that anymore. There is just your understanding, your awareness, and your ability as you switch from 3D to 5D to go up, brushing your teeth, looking in the mirror, and not see the old you with the with the, the confines of your body. And this this is all I am. I'm a physical person in a physical world. That's nonsense. You're not. There are many things that you can't see, but you can feel. And they're there. And they're more important than what you can see in the mirror. They're more important than when you look at your hand and you see the atoms and the blood and the bones and the tendons flowing. There are energies around you that, that enable you to do things that you don't yet understand. They are part of you and they will never cease to be. And all that will happen from now onwards is that you will discover them. So you need to reject or, or discard that way of thinking, way of looking at yourself as a uh, confined, restricted, limited being, and you need to accept the infinity within you and your ability to do anything that you wish, including creating and including channeling. Okay, um, that's it. I, I want to welcome you and thank you for being here. It means a lot to me. 
and I hope that you appreciate the video and I invite you to subscribe to, to the channel, to look at the website, get acquainted. If you have any questions, of course, you have my email and so on in the description. And uh, thank you so much, honestly. Namaste and have a, a great day, evening, wherever you are. Thank you. Bye-bye.